Good morning, everyone. I'm going to share my screen to start. Let's see. And let's see. That going. All right. Hi, I'm Lori Freitag from Revision Effects. And today we're collaborating with our partners from Left Angle to present Autograph, an innovative application for motion design, visual effects, and 2D, 3D compositing that will revolutionize your workflow. As the exclusive worldwide distributors for Left Angle, we're thrilled to bring their cutting edge application to the market. In this joint session, we'll provide an overview of Autograph and showcase some of the remarkable features it has to offer while demonstrating some of our most popular plugins within the software. Before we dive in, let me give you a brief introduction to what we do. With 25 years of experience in creating plugins, Revision Effects tools have become essential for professionals who create television content, movies, commercials, station IDs, and live event programming. Our plugins offer consistent and exceptional results across more than 20 editing, visual effects, and compositing applications. What sets us apart is our flexibility. Our users can easily transfer their licenses between almost any certified application. So now I'd like to introduce Francois Grassard from Left Angle. He will share more about himself, Left Angle, and then delve into a detailed presentation of their groundbreaking new application. So now I'll pass it on to Francois. Thank you. Oh, let me stop sharing my screen. Mm -hmm. change. Mm. Sorry, let me see. Oh, stop sharing. Okay, here we go. Sorry. Good. Okay, hi. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Francois Grassard. I'm one of the co-founders at Left Angle, and uh, I'm also the CEO of the company. And today I'm going to show you Autograph, who is a 2D and 3D creation and compositing system. Uh, and uh, let's dive in uh, the software to show exactly how it works and what you can do with it. So my screen should be visible right now. Okay. So this is Autograph. Uh, it's a layer-based compositing system. Uh, you have... Uh, different windows. The first one is a project window when you can uh, import your different uh, assets, image, animation, 3D assets, and so on. The viewer when you can see the result of your composition. The property window when you can edit different kind of parameters and the timeline when you are going to manage parameters and also the timing of uh, uh, every element in your composition. So I'm going to start to uh, show you something about the compositing process and also about the performance of the software. Uh, here I'm working with just a small laptop, but everything has been optimized to uh, run smoothly on any kind of computer. Obviously, if you have a huge workstation, it's going to be faster. Uh, but everything has been uh, designed to work only also on small laptop. Here I'm doing this demonstration on a small uh, laptop. Uh, here, I'm just going to, um, maybe I have a pop-up right now, activate, okay, so, um, uh, I'm going to show you a few things about the compositing process just by removing this uh, green screen on the back. So in Autograph, we have the concept of modifiers. Modifiers is exactly the same concept as effect, but we name them modifiers because you, you can add this kind of effect of any kind of data, images, and also numerical value, also text value, also 3D object. The goal is to have an initial state and to modify this initial state to do something else. So here I'm going to add this color difference scale, which is pretty similar to the K light available in other solution, uh, but the main difference is you're going to see that it's pretty pretty fast and work almost in real time in, in all, um, a lot of situation uh, so i just going to switch to source and select the background color here i only select one color but we can also uh, rely on a background image, a clean plate here. So now I'm going to switch to uh, the corrected mat, with uh, uh, the raw mat and the corrected mat who are extracted from uh, this, uh, this uh, green color in the background. And uh, as you can see, I don't have to uh, click an option to validate it. That's something you can find in Autograph uh, pretty almost every time. 
uh, for instance, if I switch here into the channel selector, you can see I just have to move my mouse over a specific option to see the results. I don't have to click on this option or this option. Uh, that's something really interesting when you have to work pretty quickly with the software. So now I'm going to switch to the corrected mat. I'm not going to uh, explain every parameters, obviously, because uh, that's a really quick presentation. But um, here I just want to show you a few things about how you can create a garbage mat and a core mat just to keep this part always uh, partially transparent because it was previously a little bit green into this area. So now I'm going to uh, simply select the uh, core mat option here. I'm going to draw a shape just to say, I want to keep this area completely opaque. So now I can get back to the uh, final result. And as you can see, I define a transparent uh, area in the background to replace this uh, green screen uh, background. Uh, as you can see, the computation is pretty fast. And um, we have something really interesting about the spill suppressing uh, when you have green pixel into fine details, such as air, for instance. Uh, that's something we call in painting. The goal of in painting is to simply remove green pixel in this really fine detail with semi-transparent and semi-transparent area and just rely on the balance value to uh, define which kind of pixel will be kept in which kind of pixel will be removed. And as you can see, we extend uh, this silhouette uh, based on the, the initial silhouette, the initial mat extracted from the key. And uh, we completely replace the green uh, pixel by this uh, interpolated or created from scratch pixel to completely remove green part. And after this, we're going to rely on this uh, corrected, uh, sorry, I'm going to get back to this RGB. Uh, we're going to rely on this alpha channel to cut uh, the newly created pixel in this image. So uh, now I have a transparent background here. I'm going just to import two other images, one for the background here. And as you can see, we have this kind of widget to with only one widget, skew the background, rescale the background, maybe scale it only uh, in one dimension. And also I'm going to place this dust images in the front of the stack. And when I want to uh, change from one blending mode to another, once again, I just have to move my mouse over to see exactly the result in real time. Once again, in the background, I'm going to add a defocus modifier. Once again, it's like an effect, but it's just a matter of terminology. I'm going to defocus a bit the background. And now, uh, as you can see, I have a selection process based on the transparency. I'm going to maximize this viewer. And when I move my mouse, you can see some flash. The so flash design exactly the, uh, the area you are going to focus on. Here, I can simply click in the foreground and move maybe the guy in the foreground, but I can also select through the alpha channel to select the background. And if you have a completely hidden layer behind these guys, for instance, you can also rely on this visual stack. The visual stack is just to show every layer in the stack to have a direct access to any element in the stack, even the completely hidden one. So I'm going to continue a little bit about the compositing part. Uh, I just want to maybe add a grade uh, effect on the guy in the, uh, the foreground. I'm going to switch to maybe the red channel and play with the white point just to equalize this channel between uh, the background and the foreground. So now I'm going to separate these uh, three values to work only on green and on blue separately. And uh, now I'm going to just equalize once again the green channel and maybe equalize also the blue channel. So the brightness of uh, the background and the foreground are now equalized. So now if I get back to the RGB, I'm just going to remove a little bit of blue, maybe like this one. OK. You can see that before the grade uh, modifier and after the grade modifier, you have this time uh, the same color in the foreground and in the background. Once again, I do it pretty quick. I don't want to spend too much time on the parameters. And after this, I can obviously um, add something like a glow, like this one. And as you, you can see, you can have uh, this pretty high glow value around uh, the, the lamp, you see, uh, here. That's because uh, in autograph, 
you are always working on 32 bit per channel. What does it mean? It means that uh, these pixels actually are not white, they are above white, they are brighter than full white. So I'm working here with a open EXR file. So uh, that image contained a lot of information about brightness, about details, and you can uh, have value over the full white. So as you can see, if I reduce the light in my viewer here, I can retrieve information uh, in this really, really bright area. And that's the thing you have to keep in mind when you work with autograph. Nothing is clipped, nothing is clamped. You keep always the value here, as you can see, into the red channel. You can see that you have a value of three. So it's three times the higher brightness available in your uh, display on your device. So this value is kept and you can at any time lower this value to uh, bring it back into the visible area. So uh, you can also add uh, uh, some modifiers such as the, I'm just going to remove uh, the color picker this time, uh, such as the light wrap to uh, have a better inter integration, especially around the hair, as you can see here, without the light wrap and with the light wrap. So that's just a quick demonstration about uh, the compositing ability, uh, the compositing feature, and also the performance of the main software, as you can see, that's pretty quick. But uh, Autograph is also well known to work on 2D and 3D at the same time. Uh, I'm gonna simply uh, import this 3D element Every 3D stuff in Autograph is based on USD. USD stands for Universal Send Description. It's a file format created by Pixar, who is made to uh, facilitate interchange between 3D software, but also to uh, merge elements into the same scene, named stage, and to create really, really, really huge scene and manage really huge scene. So as you can see, I only have the silhouette of my headphone because I don't have any light into my scene. But now I can create a composition and drop this 3D object into my composition, switch my viewer to 3D. And now I can define this point of view here and create a camera from this point of view. So pay attention to the stack here, please. When I'm gonna click on the create camera from view, I can see a new camera available in my, uh, in my timeline. And I can also add a light here and switch to dome light to have a 360 environment light. And I can use this kind of 360 image once again with value above one with pretty, pretty, pretty bright value with a lot of detail in it. So now if I get back to my composition and select my light and simply connect this uh, environment image to this light, as you can see now, I can see the reflection uh, inside uh, in the metallic part of my headphone. And I can uh, select the light and also rotate this light. As you can see, the reflection is now moving. I can switch this environment light with another one, a dark one. And once again, when I'm going to uh, rotate or move this light, everything is going to be updated in real time. But uh, I'm going to just to get back to this really bright environment here. I'm going to get back to my camera. And the 3D rendering is done on the fly. And now I can get back to the 2D world. I can also add adjustment layer on the top of the stack to add different kind of effect also known as modifier, keep this in mind, but I can also create a new composition and drop this composition into the second composition as a sub composition. And now I get back to the 2D world. So I'm able to put this background image in the back and maybe also this uh, left angle logo on the front. And because I'm get back to 2D, I can now add 2D modifiers such as a blur, for instance, uh, not a bilateral blur, bilateral blur, but uh, just a blur. Okay, gonna increase the size a bit. So now my headphone is completely blurry, but I can lock this viewer to the composition two and get back in the timeline to composition one. And now I can 
select my uh, headphone and as you can see, rotate it and animate it uh, in the same software, 2D and 3D in the same solution. So the goal is to uh, don't have to record any image on the disk. You can render on the fly and you can compose it on the fly with only one application. Pretty uh, handy if you are a motion designer and need to do a lot of 3D animation and do the composite and add a lot of effect on the fly. For now, we integrate um, a render engine named Filament, who is made for a real-time application, but uh, real-time rendering. But we are uh, looking to integrate more and more render engine because USD is made to connect to external render engine such as uh, V-Ray, such as Renderman, uh, such as uh, Redshift. And we are talking with uh, vendors and distributors to know exactly how we can connect through USD uh, to this external render engine. I'm going to show you a, a more complex example about 3D. Um, just want to connect to this 3D asset. I use the word connect, that's pretty important. It's not importing, it's connect, because when you connect to this USD scene, if anything changes into the USD uh, file, uh, all change will be reflected in real time in autograph. It's not an import, it's a connection. So now here, as you can see, I have a, a character driven by a skeleton. It's an animated character. And uh, now I can create a blank scene because I don't want to keep everything in this scene. I just want to keep the guy and I don't just want to remove the ground and remove the environment light. So I create a new scene, a blank scene. I'm going once again, to connect to this asset. And now I have a full access to the entire hierarchy of the scene. So I can turn off the light. I can also remove the plane, maybe remove this camera because it's completely useless for me and also remove the amateur. So now once again, I have a completely dark scene with a moving character and I can create a new composition, drop this new scene with this filters ele filtered element into this scene, get back to 3D and I'm gonna import or connect, sorry, not import, but connect to another uh, USD asset. And as you can see, I can drop this asset in the same timeline. And now these two assets are merged into one scene, into one stage in the USD terminology. So um, the lightning available in the second asset is no use to light my character. So I just going to change the focal length of this camera, maybe to 25. And once again, create a new uh, camera based on this point of view. So once again, pay attention to the stack I create on this button. And as you can see now, I have a new camera defined from this point of view. I'm going to just rename this guy character one. And I can also duplicate this character and maybe move his brother into uh, the corridor. So now I have two character, two character available into this corridor. And I can time offset this guy to have two different kinds of movement for the same guy. And I can extend the lifetime of this guy, but as you can see, nothing has been defined before this animation. So that's the reason you can, for 2D assets and also 3D assets, you can extrapolate what happened before this initial range using bounce or loop, or maybe if you want to keep exactly the, the last frame or the first frame. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing for after the initial range. So now I have two moving guys who are going to move to the infinity. Okay. So because we are using filament uh, as a render engine, filament have a bunch of 2D post process, such as the ambient occlusion to add uh, shadows in penumbra, uh, depending on the geometry. But we also have fog. Uh, if you want to, uh, for instance, uh, put this guy into a uh, steam, into the corridor. And we also have the depth of field. So by using the camera and defining the focus distance here, I can do, uh, I can focus on the first guy and I can also uh, select my camera, maybe go to the beginning of uh, the animation, create a new keyframe go through the timeline and just move my camera to focus on the second guy. So as you can see, the render is done on the fly. And once again, I can take this composition and add this dust element on the top of the stack 
and switch to once again the screen mode so as you can see i do the 3d rendering and do the composite at the same time uh, with only one software but you can also do the opposite and i have a scene here i'm gonna load it so um that's gonna load and connect to all the 3d assets in the project so now as you can see i have a NBA like animation with here two screen one of the one on the top with the name of the team and one in the background we may be a highlight of a, an action in the game from yesterday and uh, these two elements these two texture used for these 3d elements are actually composition uh, the first one is here with pretty simple text animation and uh, some moving a row from left to right and so on. And in this case, I have a second composition named bottle screen with once again, a simple animation here. So I get back to the final composition. I'm gonna lock my viewer to the final composition and I want to expose, I want to connect these uh, layers, um, the text layers to easily change the name of the team. So I simply add a tab to add uh, custom controllers. I go to the top screen, and now I'm going to drag and drop uh, this source text and expose the content of this source text as a custom parameters. So now I can say hello to you. And these uh, parameters can be connected to uh, external data. You can, if you use uh, Autograph uh, Studio, we have two versions, I'm going to talk about that. If you use Autograph Studio, you can use a command line and you can use, you can pass this kind of parameters through the command line to automate the rendering and customize the content of your animation. Uh, in this case, I have this uh, animation with a French map for a river report uh, because I'm French. That's the reason I use a French map. Uh, and the position and the type of icon pictogram used here is actually defined by this CSV file. So when you want to connect something, any kind of parameters, it can be a position, a numerical value, <laughs> uh, the content of a text layer, or maybe the path to an image, you can uh, define uh, an, you can connect these parameters to an external file to create a dynamic uh, a dynamic template and change everything on the fly uh, on the fly based on external data. So uh, here something interesting we use something called the instancer. Actually, all the icon. Uh, available display on the screen is only one layer because we use the instancer who is nearly similar to a particle system where you can define a bunch of information such as position and also a bunch of icon available into a library and you can spread all icon all over the map using the external data. I'm not going to go uh, too complex about this, but you can go to the left angle channel uh, on YouTube and you will find a lot of uh, tutorial about uh, how instancer work. So one thing also interesting is the uh, ability to work on multiple formats at the same time. Uh, for this, uh, here I have a, a project here when I work with the same composition, that's really important to be precise about that, uh, with the same composition display in this 16 by 9 viewer and this 4 by 3 viewer. Uh, here you can say you can see I focus in on the final composition and also the final composition. So if I select this uh, icon, if I, if I move this logo here, as you can see on the left, you can also see it moving on the right in the four by three uh, aspect ratio. Uh, the way you can do this is to simply by defining position, uh, not this one, sorry, I'm just going to create a new composition instead of a new project. So I created a new composition and I'm going to maybe close this uh, second viewer and I'm going to drop this logo here on uh, the composition in the composition as a new layer and instead of saying i want to move 
this logo to the left at this specific coordinate for position one I think who is really important it has a zero zero the origin of the coordinate system is at the center of your composition that's pretty handy when you want to create symmetrical animation between two logos for instance so here you can say i just want to use a generator the goal of a generator is to generate something a numerical value an image uh maybe to define some behavior and in this case i say i just want to put this logo on the left on of the composition based on the left of uh, the logo. And so now, as you can see, I can define an initial format for this composition defined here, but I can also override this format at any time. And this behavior, when you say, uh, when we describe this rule to say, I want you go always on the left of the composition will be applied depending of the new format defined for this composition. So that's the way you can work in uh, multiple format at the same time um, and that's pretty handy when you have to create a lot a lot a lot of format based on the same project so that was uh, just an overview of uh, everything available in autograph as you can see you can work with uh uh, 2D and 3D at the same time. You can work on multiple formats. Uh, the software is pretty fast to compute. You can also uh, have access to a bunch of VFX features. I didn't talk about the way you can work with Excel file and also PSD file and work with passes when you work with 3D rendering. But uh, you can find a bunch of information on the website here. Uh, when you have a bunch of information about how you can work with passes and 3D and uh, the ability to work with a 2D tracking system and a 2D planar tracking system. You can uh, have information about the price. You have two versions, Autograph Creator and Autograph Studio. Exactly the same feature for both versions, yeah. but the difference is you can run a command line rendering with Autograph Studio and also have access to a Python API. And you can try the software for 90 days for free. So feel free to try it. And if you want to have access to a bunch of project and assets, you can go to the welcome page and in the asset section, you will have access to uh, a lot of projects. Obviously, I have a few difficulties to lot the project. Okay. So uh, for instance, here, uh, you will have all uh, the assets I use here in this session to recreate the green screen process and also some information about the roto part. So a bunch of uh, assets available here and feel free to try the software. So now get back to Lori, who will show how you can use uh, all um, revision effects plugin in Autograph because using the OpenFX standard, all uh, uh, plugins are available. Thank you very much for your attention. And now let's get back to Lori. Thank you, Francois. That was a lot um, of great information. So let's just... Uh... Let's just start. I'm going to do a quick demo of our plugins in Autograph. So our plugins use the OFX version, as Francois just said. And we can start with a quick example of Twixter. This is Twixter here that you're seeing. And uh, Twixter is our retiming plugin, and it intelligently slows down, speeds up, or changes the frame rate of your image sequence. So some of you might be familiar with Twixter, but what I want to show you is how easy it is to use Twixter in Autograph. So let's go ahead and create a new composition. And then we're going to drag this shot into our composition. And we're going to add a modifier. And now you all know what a modifier is. So that's a, our plugin, Twixter. And I'm just going to type that. And now we see we have um, we have Twixter here in the timeline or over here in the properties pane. So we can work in either place. And we have some uh, controls. It looks familiar probably because, uh, because uh, it looks the same in all the applications. So if you've worked in it one place, you'll recognize it and be able to work easily in Autograph as well. One of the other advantages to using Autograph in uh, using Twixter in Autograph is that in other applications, we have to uh, pre-comp or pad the footage. But in here, all we do is drag the out point because Twixter inherently will 
lengthen your clip when you do a slowdown. So it's just a lot easier to do it in autograph. So we can uh, see here, we can use speed percentage or frame number, and I'm gonna use speed percentage and we're gonna add a few keyframes here to slow down and speed up these bike riders. So we can just start here with a uh, 100%, so it'll start in real time. And then we're gonna just slow it right down to 50%. And we're going to hold that keyframe for a little while. So we'll just add another keyframe and then we're gonna speed it right up to 200%. And maybe add another keyframe here to hold the 200%. And then we're just going to uh, have that ramp down back to 100%. Okay, so we can just play that back and we're seeing the preview here, but we're going to see uh, that this is now 50% and then it's going to speed up and then they're gonna go fast. They're gonna get moving here at 200%. And then they're going to ramp down. I'm just going to play that back a little faster here. Okay, there you go. Now it's running at real time, 30 frames per second. Okay, so right now what we're in is called the uh, dope sheet view, but we're going to move to the curve editor so that you can see another great uh, reason to work in autograph with our plugins because you have access to all their fancy features. So we can uh, select the keyframes we just made and we have access to the uh, 49 different um, interpolations that we could use that are within autograph. So that's another reason that it's really great working in autograph with our plugins. Now we're going to add another one of our plugins. Uh, this is a uh, Real smart motion blur. So some of you might be also familiar with that. Um, this is our uh, motion blur. It's variable amount of blur. The great thing about real smart motion blur is that it analyzes every pixel on every frame and applies the motion blur accordingly. So you can see this guy's not moving. He doesn't have any motion blur over here. They're going a little faster. They have more. So we can add blur variable amounts. We can also remove blur. So you end up with some sharpening. So it's really easy to use. And I'm just going to show you uh, that playing back. It's great for live action, various types of CG, um, also for uh, stop motion, and hand-drawn animation. So it's really good for all types of animation. And you can adjust it on the fly just like this. You can see it's really easy and fast. So now we're gonna move on to another plugin. We're gonna uh, check out uh, the Flickr. So let's see. Let's check out this from the beginning. This is a, this is DFlickr. It was developed to address uh, some of the different situations from which we get flickering. In this case, uh, we're going to see high speed. Um, and we have a suite of plugins. We have high speed, time lapse, auto levels, and we also have rolling bands. So this is a common scenario where we have, this has been shot at uh, 240 frames per second. And uh, we have artificial lighting. So we get, uh, sometimes it's out of sync. We're going to create a new composition. And we're gonna drag our shot here into the composition. And we're going to go ahead and add the flicker high speed. So over here, you can see that we have uh, the time window and it's set to two. That's going to compare two adjacent frames. So two frames on either side. And if you step through this, you can see that the flickering is on twos, it happens to be on twos, it's out of phase. So it's one, two, one, two. 
Um, so we're going to keep the default settings here, the time window at two, and we're going to just change the method. So we have all these different methods to get rid of Flickr. And in this case, we're going to use the alternate period two because it works great for this particular situation. So if I play that back, you can see we've now got rid of the Flickr. And I also have a before and after, so you can see the difference. So you can see it's really easy and fast to use dflickr, and that was just with the default settings. And you also have a lot of uh, controls if you don't get it right with the default settings, you can adjust it. So now we're gonna see one more plugin for today. We're gonna see our newest plugin, and this is uh, Reza. We have two plugins, ResUp Resize and ResUp Enhance. We're gonna see Resize today. Resize will allow you to upscale your video without the loss of any quality. And then Enhance will increase the image quality or the resolution without temporal artifacts. So this, uh, this footage here is 2K and we're gonna go ahead and create a new composition. We're gonna make it 4K. So we start out by creating a composition and we change the size to 4K and we go ahead and also make the, um, make the frame rate match as well. And we're gonna, then we go to the composition and in Autograph we create what's called a constant. So we add, res up resize to the constant. We just add that. And then we go here where it says get color source and we add our image right there. Now we also have one more little step. We make it uh, the constant, the same size as the composition. And then all we do is say fit to canvas. And now we have our 4K footage. Now we use different filters to do that. So we can see the comparison using linear, which is just the uh, transformation from whatever your host application is. So we can compare linear to, we have all these other ones to Mitchell Lansos, but SuperRes uses AI. So we have, we can see the comparison using linear and SuperRes. We can also enhance the details we have more controls here. We have a pre-process, uh, some pre-process tools. We have a pre-filter mode. If you have noisy footage or soft footage, you can use one of these modes as well. And getting back to our, our super res and our linear to see the comparison, I'm just gonna scale it up a little bit more so you can see, um, really see the difference. So this is with super res and here's with linear. So you can see we have a pretty good uh, result here using, using uh, resize in Autograph. And it's really fast to compute as well. So this is a quick overview of a few of our plugins in Autograph. And Francois gave a really great overview of some of the mini tools in Autograph. And just wanna show you, uh, if you want to download or try any of our products, we have all of our products on our website. You can go to our website. You can also download and try them for free. In addition, you can download Autograph from our, our website as well as the Left Angle uh, website. So I'm gonna hand you back. It's, it's actually time to win a prize or two. You're gonna win, um, uh, we have two winners who, uh, are gonna win a license of affections, a permanent license of affections, which is our bundle of plugins. And uh, let's see, and then there's Autograph Creator. So I'm gonna hand you over to Megan and she's going to uh, pick the winners. So let's mm -hmm. see. Okay, so the winner of the affections bundle is Terry Lynn Scott. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations.
<laughs> and I don't have a picture for the other one, but the winner of the other prize, um, Lori, what was the other prize? It's the autograph, the autograph creator that, autograph creator, Francois, yeah. that Francois was demonstrating. Awesome. That is going to be Zach Laban. Congratulations. Congratulations. And I think you just need to uh, contact one of us or, or Megan and get the code, the, the code that I supplied for them to, uh, to get your software. Yep. Um, you can email, um, event help at FMC training, or you can email, um, maybe you can put it in the chat. Who I will put that in the chat and you can also email the revision effects team, but let me. Thank you everyone. Thank you for your time. Let's see if there's, are there any questions here? I think, are we out of time? Nope, you still have a few minutes. If anyone has any questions, feel free to mm -hmm. throw them in the Q&A. And if not, we'll wrap up in a minute. Let's see. Just to reply to the question of uh, Roland, uh, I, I do um, a live session on Twitch uh, next uh, Last week, last week, yeah. Last week, and, uh, last week. Yes, it was last week, and it's it's still available on Twitch because uh, I I will uh, doing uh, I will do a, a um, an editing sorry of his live session to put this on the YouTube, YouTube yeah. on the YouTube channel, uh -huh. but it's still available uh, on uh, on Twitch uh, today until tomorrow, I guess. So it's uh, I see most of the Twitch session. Oh, thank you very much, Ron. <laughs> so yeah, I demonstrated this thing uh, last week, and uh, I will do a lot of new tutorial for the YouTube channel about this topic because it's really important uh, to have the ability to work on multiple formats at the same time and render everything in a row. Uh, so yeah, I will do a bunch of tutorial about this. Okay. Do we have any other questions here? Let's see. It's time to go to sleep for Laurie right now. <laughs> 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 to have a little sleep. <laughs> well, if there's no more questions, we'll go ahead and wrap up. Um, great job, Francois and Laurie. Thanks so much. Thank you very um, much. Be sure to visit the Revision Effects uh, booth in the Sponsor Lounge. Um, if anyone has any questions, you can email Event Help or the Revision Effects email or Francois just dropped the left angle uh, dot com. But yeah. And I'll put it. Thanks everyone for joining. In the next sessions, we're starting in about ten minutes. Um, Thanks so much. Thanks, Lori and Francois. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a very nice day, all. Bye. Bye.